you know, so opening up your divine channel is really a truly beautiful process because really all you're doing is you're reclaiming or you're remembering one of your most natural state of beings. And, you know, because when you were a child, let's say, you were always in the channeling state. You were always in that state of receiving information. You weren't so analytical yet. So the main thing I want you to hear in this is that this is something that's already natural to you. This is something that you're remembering. That's why it's so easy to learn because you're not learning anything new. You're just remembering or you're becoming more conscious of something that you're already doing unconsciously. For example, have you ever had the experience where you're talking to someone and you're giving them advice and then at some point you're just so blown away by the wisdom and the information coming through you that you're just as blown away as them and you're just like where did that come from how many of you guys can relate to that a show of hands yes kind of sort of cool another example might be maybe uh, you're a creative person and you're an artist you know and if you're any kind of creativity or any kind of even sport or activity you have that that experience of being in the zone where things just flow through you and you're like, oh, I just, I just got to keep painting or I got to keep writing the song, right? That is the channeling state, which is indicative of the gamma frequency in the brain. We could actually measure this now. So what I want to speak to is how do we access this state at will and how do we nourish our gifts so that we could really turn the volume up in a very simple and practical way? That's what we're going to be going over here. And if there's time after, we'll, we'll take some questions as well. So first and foremost, we're going to use the analogy of planting a seed in the soil and letting that seed blossom into a flower. Because that's what we're doing over here with your consciousness. We're, we're, we're preparing the soil so that that blossom of your channel can happen. And so in order to first prepare the, the soil, I want you to imagine that within your consciousness, there are only two radio stations. Now, truthfully, there's a lot more, but I'm doing this for simplification. I want you to imagine that there's two radio stations. There's the radio station of who you think you need to be and who you truly are, right? And the idea is that, you know, who you think you need to be might be, I need to be professional, I need to be proper, I need to be serious, I need to be tough, I need to show up in this way, you know, I need to not smile. Those are all the, the elements of who you think you need to be, which is different from who you truly are. You know, maybe who you truly are is silly, is goofy, doesn't like to be professional, likes to laugh out loud at weird things. So this is where authenticity becomes a factor because it prepares the soil of your consciousness where the sooner you let go of who you think you need to be, the sooner you become more of who you truly are. And who you truly are is the radio dial in your consciousness that allows for the clarity of your channel. Who's following me so far? Yes? Good. So authenticity is key here, which is another way of saying embodying your truth, being so devoted, so re relentless, so uncompromising in embodying your truth and who you are and how you choose to show up, which also in includes how you express yourself in the world, that really prepares the soil. So it's perfectly okay if you start off with a smaller soil of authenticity, let's say, you know, you're like, all right, one of the practices that I give people, and you could actually do this as well later on is take a piece of paper. This will actually greatly help, by the way. Take a piece of paper and you're going to draw a line down the middle. And on the left side, you're going to write who I think I need to be. On the right side, who I truly am. And the beautiful thing about being in a world of duality is that the second you identify who you think you need to be, you're going to know who you truly are. You're going to write serious, silly, you know, tough, sensitive. So it's a, it's a very simple and easy practice for you to make conscious any subconscious behaviors that are out of alignment with your true, authentic soul self so that you can more easily tune that dial. Very simple and practical exercise. So it's okay to start off with a smaller soil, so to speak, of authenticity as you learn and practice embodying your truth more and more to the point where there's no difference between the you that shows up with your friends than the you that shows up with your family, than the you that shows up at work, et cetera. That is you expanding the soil. 
Okay, we're giving you all the practical elements over here. So that's step one, if we want to look at it that way, is get on your soul's frequency, get on your authentic channel, who you truly are, so that you have access to that. Clear? Am I being clear so far? Cool. Beautiful. Now, let's say you're at that point where you've cultivated your authenticity and you've embodied your truth to a certain degree. Now you're naturally going to feel a certain level of flow that perhaps you didn't feel before because things will just move more easily in your consciousness when you're not holding on to rigidities when you're not holding on to things of who you think you have to be you're not using energy there so your energy can flow more clearly this is where you'll feel more access to things such as inspiration intuition flow because you're being yourself and so the more you're being your most natural self the more naturalness of the divine could flow through you and so this is where the question becomes okay well now i'm being my natural self i'm being true i've prepared the soil how do I actually amplify and ignite my gifts? How do I access them? Well, I'm happy you asked. To keep it very simple, the thing that most nourishes and ignites your gifts, where you'll find yourself in situations where you're channeling for others or you're receiving divine information and you're just in that flow, is when you consistently act on your highest passions, joys, and excitements. Simple as that your passions, your joys, your inspirations, all those feelings that light you up, you know, those attractive feelings that spark you, those are literally the nourishment that ignite your gifts. That's what turns up the volume on your channel. Very simple. This is why anytime, you know, you see someone acting on their joy or their passion, they go into the zone. They feel like they're in the zone because they're nourishing their gifts and they're allowing that to blossom. That's part of what's allowing that to happen. Okay, so just as a very simple practice, before I go into more subtleties, the idea here is to recognize the reason why I'm emphasizing the importance of prioritizing and acting on your highest inspirations, your, your joys, your excitement, is because those energies are quite literally the language of your higher self. Your higher self communicates to you in the language of feelings that feel good to you, of feelings that spark you up, that make you feel like more of yourself. This is how your higher self communicates. And so on a day-to-day -day basis, if you wanna live, if you wanna know how to live your life from moment to moment so that it becomes an explosion of magic abundance and synchronicity, and so that you stop having to figure things out and you tune into where things are figured out for you, the way you do that is you say, okay, hold on a second. I'm going to start prioritizing my highest excitement and joy as opposed to my, you know, what I think needs to get done or making money or I have to do this for my family. There's nothing wrong with those priorities. But what I'm suggesting is that when you prioritize your highest joy, it's also inclusive of these things, but you get to feel better while doing it. You get to embody your higher self and share more of that higher self love and flow towards everything else that needs to get done. So then if you can understand that, if you recognize that that's a good priority to have, basically filling up your own cup and giving from the overflow, then you'll recognize that in every moment, there's a number of things that you could choose to focus on, right? When you leave this call, there's a number of things you could choose to focus on. If you were to simply focus on the thing that has the highest level of excitement, highest level of joy or inspiration, highest level of fun, and act on that thing for its own sake, just because it feels good, and you keep doing that without any kind of insistence on an outcome, not only will your life become that explosion of synchronicity, but you're going to be opening up your channel and coming more and more in resonance with divine information. That's how you raise your vibration. Is this making sense so far? Yeah, cool. Perfect. Because think of it this way. Let's say this is where divine information exists. Let's just say as an example, this is where clarity, inspirations, intuitions, all the flow exists. And let's just say you're in a denser part of your life because you've been stressing about work and trying to get things done and trying to get clients and whatever. So you're vibrating over here, which is okay. And you decide, you know, instead of prioritizing to force myself to do things, I'm going to prioritize my highest excitement and joy. Even if it doesn't look like it'll help me get things done, 
I know that it will because it's the voice of my higher self. So you you decide to go for a walk instead of forcing yourself to work. And then on that walk, you feel grateful and that raises your vibration. And then all of a sudden an inspiration drops in. And then you click into that reality, to that radio station, where all those things are already existing, that divine information. And you start to practice and live from that space more often than not, because you realize it's just a tuning of your dial. All right. So I'm breaking it down in richness so you can see that prioritizing your passions, your inspirations, your excitements, not only nourishes your gifts and opens your channels and gives you access to the synchronicities of your guides and all those other things, but it literally makes your life flow. It allows you to tune into where things are figured out for you. So you don't have to figure things out. So that's the basic how to of how to get into the state and turn up the volume of your spiritual gifts and access your channel. That's the basics. All right. I'm going to pause for a quick second. Let it marinate. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Jenny. Now, now that you understand how to get into the state of your gifts, letting go of who you think you need to be, becoming who you are, and turn up the volume of your channel by acting on your passions and excitements. The question now becomes, okay, well now how do I play with my gifts? How do I actually access them at will? And in a sense, like learn how to play the piano of your gifts. Okay. So there are certain principles that will help you here. And I'm gonna go through this, I guess, in two phases. There are certain laws, principles that really ignite your ability to access source energy. Because you have to understand that source energy, your spirit guides, they operate of a certain vibration. It's a very pure vibration in service to the highest good, right? Your, your guides aren't there just trying to be right all the time or trying to force information down people's throats. However, what a lot of people do sometimes is they want to be intuitive so that they can show that they have the right answer so that they can get through to someone, right? And they might be doing so innocently, or maybe not so. Maybe they're, you know, kind of just like, I want to get through to this person. But this is where we start to align our intentions with our ability to channel. So number one, having a pure intention accesses your channel. Pure intention meaning the highest good for all involved. That is always my intention. No matter who I'm talking to, no matter where I'm speaking, my default intention is the highest good for all involved. Raises vibration. Now, me and Source are talking the same language. Second thing, and by the way, when I say highest good for all involved, again, recognize I'm not saying getting the answer through, helping that person change, you know, any of those things. It's just the highest good for all involved, whether it gets through or not. Okay, highest good for all involved. Number two, and this is something that really gets looked over a lot, you know, when I'm training people in channeling, this is one of the things that it's always like, a, oh, I forgot about that, is the importance of playfulness. Spirit is a very playful energy. It's a very light frequency. So when you're trying to do these things very seriously, and you're really focusing, and you're like, okay, hold on, let me do it. Let me meditate. Let me, okay, let me access my guides. Hold on, wait, let me. Let me just really focus. Hold on, I need three hours. Hold on, wait, wait, right? When you're doing things like that, you're not operating on the same vibrational resonance as spirit. Spirit is a very playful energy. So this is where you can look to your inner child. You know, where I always say, the divine child is the God within. Look at the frequency and the energy of yourself as a child, as a divine child within. And you're going to start to see the energies that I'm talking about as far as what helps you access your gifts at will. Because if you're doing it seriously, it's going to, you'll get maybe a slow drip. But if you're in a playful state and you're having fun and you're not needing to be professional or serious and you're just being a goof, you're going to have that much more access to the frequencies of spirit because you're in that vibrational resonance. Okay. Now, with that being said, I also don't want to overload you here. One of the greatest ways 
that you can begin to actually practice your gifts right now because you want to leave this experience maybe even this day and be like okay i got this i have something to move with i want to i want to practice my channeling so that as i move through the days that follow i see that this is really working for me because again this is your birthright this is your natural birthright one of the ways that you can practice this with the things that i've suggested is to experiment to explore with someone you see because what happens is if you have someone or a circle of friends that are also interested in growing that are interested in expanding that are interested in clarity in a sense when they ask you questions and they need help with something or they have desires their desires serves serves so much as, as like a grounding circuit where they literally pull information through you so that it can reach them that's why when people ask you certain questions you get sparked you know that's also why when i asked when i came on here i asked daniela do you have a prompt for me i was i was like i'm like give me the spark of what's needed here so when she gave me the prompt i'm like okay got it i see what's wanting to come through so what you guys can do if you want to practice this starting today is you can get a group of people, do an Instagram live, however you want to do it, or even one friend, and say to them, first, you're going to create the field for yourself. You're going to say, hey, so I'm practicing and I'm trying something new over here that I've really been wanting to explore for a long time. I, I'm by no means an expert. I don't consider myself an expert. You know, I really just want to play around with something here. Would you be down to be in this space with me? Because I really want to practice my channel, my channeling. I want to practice bringing through divine information. And so if there's anything that maybe you're wanting to explore that you've been wanting clarity on or help with, we could just explore together and have fun with it and have no expectations. That is you creating the play, the playground for your gifts to blossom and for you to, to begin growing your gifts. And I promise you, if you approach things in this way, because you're not showing up saying, okay, hey, I know how to channel, uh, ask me questions, because you're not showing up feeling like you need to be perfect or professional or any of these things you're literally saying the truth like hey i'm practicing i'd love to try this let's explore together that allows them to empathize with you to relate with you to feel your authenticity your intimacy and be like okay cool yeah let's play let's let's see what will come from this and guaranteed anyone who is devoted to their growth in some way shape and form will have some sort of question they want to explore some sort of thing they want clarity or a breakthrough in and so you just invite them very gently, gently and playfully to ask you questions and to be like, you know, they'll be like, well, I've been wondering what to do with work because I really want to do this, but I'm stuck in that. Notice how as soon as they ask you that question, you're going to get sparked. And then your job is simply to play with that spark and to follow the spark, dance with it as it flows through you to the best of your ability and to continue to be playful with it. and to simply ask them if it resonates as you continue on through your channeling. That's it. It's really that simple. Am I, am I being clear over here, by the way? Does this feel very resonant? Cool. I'm going to look at questions in the chat in a moment, but I really just wanted to provide you guys with the actual practical steps on how to do this right now when you leave today so that you can continue to evolve and also build the confidence of like, oh, no, I could do this. And there's more. Right? There's always more subtleties. There's always more mastery to learn. Uh, you know, I myself have been doing this for 11, 12 years, something like that. So there's always more to it, but this will give you that playground to get started. So that being said, are there any questions coming in that maybe, uh, Daniela, you could choose um, the questions that most spark you that you feel I should answer, if that's okay? I'm not, I'm not seeing questions in the chat, but I see that Benny's got his hand up. Cool. Could, could, could we, Benny, could you unmute yourself? I'd love to hear from you. Hi, David. Hi, everyone. How you doing, brother? Yeah, good. Thank you. Yourself? Very good. Good, good. Thank you for your talk. It's awesome. I love it. Amazing. Good. I'm happy you're enjoying um, my question was, is there a certain technique to connect with your guide while you're doing the channeling? Um, I've been taught like spirit 
healing and conscious healing and obviously there's always like a practical technique is it mm -hmm. the same with channeling as well so you don't necessarily need a technique and this is where it gets really fun there are some outdated or let's just say traditional modes of channeling which might provide you with techniques and te techniques are great in my opinion as training wheels because they show you how to get used to an energy but with the way we're sharing it here now in a sense you get to go to the next step more easily because think of it this way your spirit guides are always constantly giving you as much information and guidance as they possibly can so much so that whenever you ask for your guides to come in and you're you know you're asking to receive your guides they're not actually coming in it's not like they're like oh he's calling i'm gonna pop in now that's not, not exactly how it works. What's actually happening when you're asking for your guides to come in is you're just choosing to make yourself aware of all the guidance that they're already giving you. That's all that's actually happening. So in a sense, that's the technique is knowing that, is understanding that. So from that point, when you, let's say you're channeling for someone else, if someone's asking you a question and you know, you're you have the pure intention and you're being playful and you know you're being authentic as someone asks you questions you're going to feel sparks of information light up at different places in your consciousness you'll know what i mean as you, as you do it those sparks in a lot of ways are your guides dropping information into your consciousness now yes there are ways to become more conscious of you know who are those guides and interacting with them and things like that that's where we get a little bit more advanced but this is just to show you where it, it does. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Is it the sixth guide that you connect with the channeling? The sixth guide? Yeah. I've done a course with a channeler that channels a being called Michael Harris from the 27th dimension. And he taught me about my guides and there's set, everybody's got seven guides and it, you know, taught me how to connect with these guides and interpret them. Um, in, in some cases you could have more, you could have less. You know, okay. you know, it's your guides are kind of like your tutors. So I want you to imagine that, you know, in some cases you have guides that stay with you throughout your whole life. And in some cases, let's say you're learning to be more vulnerable because you've been really um, closed hearted for a while. So you'll, you might have certain guides come in to teach you vulnerability, who will create and orchestrate certain synchronicities in your life to help you learn vulnerability and will give you messages on that. And then once you learn that lesson, they can move on to other playgrounds so it's it it it, it, it always changes it changes and shifts you know so it's I, that's where i just like to keep it really simple and just kind of refer to them as the guides and and play with it from there so we don't get overly mental about it i feel that definitely it, it did tell me that they evolve in time and stuff like that and change but you pick up certain ones like your seventh guide like from your first incarnation on well wherever you was <laughs> You know, so, but yeah, I'm definitely feeling what you're saying. And what I'm getting from it is basically just open yourself up and be free to be as open and free as possible to the playfulness of the universe. Exactly. Look, this is what we're going to do in a moment. All of you are going to receive a message from your spirit guides. All right. We're going to play a game right here. Who wants to receive a message from your spirit guides within the next 30 seconds? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> just to show you how simple this is. What I want you to do is set the intention and get excited for no reason at all about receiving a message from your spirit guides about whatever you most might need to hear about, whatever's most relevant. So you're not deciding, okay, I need a message about how to make money. You're, you're saying, you know what? I want to receive a message about whatever is most relevant to my life right now, to my expansion, my growth. So have that excitement in you of like, oh, that would be cool. And then all I want you to do is to ask your guides in this moment to drop a song in your head that you most need to hear. And notice it might surprise you. And go with the first song that drops in. Don't think about it. And start typing it in the chat once you got it. Don't worry, be happy, beautiful. I'm so proud of you. Girls just want to have fun. 
Money, money, <laughs> money. <laughs> right? So the idea here, and Benny, I want to hear what you got as well. <laughs> what, what, what song did you get? <laughs> well, it's raining men. <laughs> but um, in lower school, the girls used to change it and say it's raining Ben. So I don't know if it's to do with that as well. So There, there you go. So you're catching the extra frequency, you know, because yeah. you, you're, it's not just about the lyrics. It's about the vibe that it sparks in you and what it reminds you of. So notice how quickly... Each of you just connected to your spirit guides because you we approach them in a creative and playful way, which is their language. You know, so again, of course, there's more advanced ways of doing this, but the idea is whatever song you get, go and listen to it after. Don't just let it play in your head, but actually go and listen to it and take it in, and you're gonna see even more of why they drop that particular song. And that's also gonna strengthen your relationship with them because it shows them that you're choosing to listen and to trust and be like, oh, okay, cool, we could keep giving them more. All right. Is this helpful? Yeah, definitely. Beautiful. Anything else? Uh, no, I don't want to take up too much of the time. There's other people as well. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Benny. Cheers, brother. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Let's go. <laughs> this is so great and fun. Get the party started, Pink. Cool. It's amazing how simple that is, right? That's why I say this is your birthright. You're not learning anything new. You're just becoming more conscious of something that's already happening for you unconsciously. That's why this is so fun and amazing. It's literally your birthright. You get to be like this all the time if you want. Let's call up Lily. Let me... Oh, I think Daniela might need to unmute you. Am I good to go? There you go. Yes. Okay. Hi, David. Hey. I came to this event just because I saw it on your profile, and it's amazing how everything is divinely guided. I'm just in awe. <laughs> so literally, I I have a super. I have even four questions, so I will be fast. Um, when you channel, do you have blackout moments? Because I realized that I don't remember at times when I channel. And then I got confused uh, recently I had when I was, spirit that came through me was so joking and so playful when it was expressing about the healthy and healthy ego that the host of the meeting got insulted by what I said. And I'm like, I don't remember what I said. Like. <laughs> Mm -hmm. do you yes. have blackouts so it's entirely possible yeah you know I, I i used to do more of a trance channeling style where i would completely get out the way and allow whatever being i was working with to come through and i wouldn't so much remember the passage of time it's like i remember bits and pieces almost like remembering a dream but i would remember the feelings however what i did notice is the more i learned to intentionally direct my connection to source as opposed to a specific guide. And both are valid, both are good. But the more I learned to direct my attention to source, the more I remained not just conscious, but I want to say awake, like wide awake in my con. There, there's a certain brilliance that comes through when I choose to do things that way, because then when I choose my intention to plug into source rather than Archangel Michael or, you know, whatever specific being is I also allow source to send me whatever guides, whatever beings are most in alignment with source or most in alignment with the intention being served in that moment. So if I am talking to guides, like, like, like is happening right now, they're coming from that source connection, which allows me to be very here. In other words, I'll remember everything that I shared with you guys by the end of this. <laughs> Okay, so the opportunity that I'm pointing to for you is to practice the intention of going straight up to source, which is, you know, I'm not going to go too deep into that practice and training because that's something else. Um, but check that out. And actually, if you want to, if you on my on my Instagram, there's something called the God meditation. That's that's something that could help you with that over there as well. Beautiful. And actually, this goes to my other question, how to how to know when I'm channeling the source and when 
I'm picking up on thoughts and of other people um, and how to know that I'm channeling because I noticed that in the past I used to find myself in a very much huge flow and all that inspiration in writing articles it was I was feeling in bliss but when I look back what I was channeling uh, it was yep. my trauma yep. so so the way that you know is that it feels very pure that's your it, it's it's never doom and gloom it's not polarizing you know it doesn't necessarily trigger people in that way it's it's very pure you know and and again this is where there's there's some more advanced parts of the training that I'm, I'm not going to go too deep into just to, to honor the space over here, you know, as much as I, I would love to. Um, but one thing you could all do here, I'll do this as a practice. Everyone could do this right now. This will take us maybe 10 seconds. Take a moment to close your eyes. Close your eyes. Feel your body. Feel your feet on the ground or wherever they may be. Let your breathing be natural. And notice that as you allow for your naturalness, the naturalness of your breathing, you can also connect to the naturalness of source of that energy that is always moving through you. And from this space, all I want you to do is to get excited. Get joyful for no reason at all, just because you can. Almost you're like, ooh, I wonder what's coming. I wonder what gifts are coming. I wonder what presents. Get excited for no reason at all. And as you do this, you're just going to say to yourself on the inside, I invite source into my body. I invite source, God, into my mind. I invite God into my heart. I invite God, God into my eyes and my gaze. I invite God into every level and layer of my being. And notice how with each invitation, you feel these subtle shifts in your energetic dynamics and temperature, so to speak. And so as you receive and maintain this connection, go ahead with your next breath, just open your eyes. And continue to shine this emanation outwards. Notice how things might seem brighter. You're breathing softer. You might even be seeing me differently. And notice how simple this was. And how easily you can do this anytime you want. Yeah? <laughs> is this helpful? Yeah, it is. And... Uh... I feel that here where I will stop and let other people ask. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Okay. Let's call up Caroline. Hi. What's Hi, popping, Caroline? How you doing? Good. I found you through Activation Vibration, Heather. <laughs> hey, that's my homegirl. Yeah. <laughs> you guys found each other um, again. So, um, I, um, thank you just for being on this and thank you everyone for joining. This is incredible. Um, <laughs> I, I'm stepping into, yeah, did like the whole dark nerd of the soul thing. Soul signed up four years ago and, you know, all that scary time, um, worked with a guide, moved through that and now in kind of the embodiment phase, ready to teach the teachings <laughs> and, mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, channeling is coming online more than ever, um, trusting myself, trusting this path, um, 
and just finding myself as I'm channeling and sharing more and more, having so many people reach out, like, wow, this resonates, wow, it's so helpful. And um, how to, <laughs> like, how to, like, be, continue to be authentic and showing up. Um, sharing your experience and channeling also for people but at the same time like how to not like become so greedy about it and like okay you guys can book a session with me like I can't just do this for free forever kind of thing like the human part is definitely like that if I'm being completely you know what I mean like I I know we're stardust and magic but (laughs) we also have like livings and you know like um like I'm subscribed to your your um your portal and it's so helpful and it's that's the exchange right it's not even about right so i'm just curious how to navigate that or seen that because right now i'm at the beginning stages of it and yes. yeah <laughs> great question and i'm sure this will be relevant for a lot of people and and thank you for being in guided growth i'm happy you're enjoying it um so be a drug dealer <laughs> I'm explaining what I mean by that. <laughs> Wait, David Lyon just tells us to be a drug dealer? Yes, but I'll explain what I mean. <laughs> what I actually mean is to be a vibes dealer. You know, and I love this analogy. I used to have a friend back in the day when I was growing up in my 20s named, well, I won't say his name, <laughs> but he was a weed dealer. And he came to the city of Montreal from Somalia, didn't know anybody. And So the only thing he had access to from his brother or whatever was weed, you know, and the way that he built his business is he would go up to people and give them free weed and say, hey, if you like this, here's my number. If you like this, you'll love this. Contact me. So what I'm suggesting is to be a vibes dealer. The way that I do it, the way that I show up is from a space of pure generosity, just like I'm doing right here, right now, is I'll show up on live stream and I'll offer whatever I have to offer because it's my highest excitement and joy. I'm not doing it because I want this to lead to sales or to clients. I'm doing it because this is who I am and this is what I love. And I and I would do this for, and I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. And so when you show up in that way and you're really serving people and people can feel if you're truly there to serve them or if you're if you have like a hook, line and sinker, right? So if you're truly there prioritizing service above money, that doesn't mean you won't get money. It just, it just means you're prioritizing the highest first. If you're there and you're serving them, then once you're feeling that flow and you're impacting them and you're feeling the wealth of your spirit, you're going to feel fulfilled. You're going to be in a, a very abundant state. Then what you could always do is at the end of it, if it feels right, is you could say, hey guys, if you enjoyed this and you would like more and you would, you know, uh, like to receive more from me, you could always DM me to book a session as well. If, mm. if you like this, you'll love this, right? It's it's really just about getting out there and serving. You know, I I remember once years ago when I was like, it's probably like 2013 or something like that, or a little later, I was I was trying to figure out how to get myself out there and thinking about marketing and like, hey, funnels <laughs> and do I do this thing and that thing? And so I called up my my friend who was also a mentor at that point. And I was like, bro, how do I do this marketing thing? And he's like, was Jesus a digital marketer? I was like, what? He's like, was Jesus a digital marketer? I'm like, um, no, not, not as far as I know. <laughs> and he was like, right. And he's the most famous dude that we know because he just got out there and served. He scrubbed feet. He He did miracles. He was serving and he became the most famous dude that we know. Get out there and serve. Yeah. So that's my message to you over there. (laughs) Okay. Going to be be a drug dealer, a vibes dealer. (laughs) Thank you. That's so. My pleasure. (laughs) Not about me. It's about them. It's about them. It's about us. It's about one. So that makes sense for sure. Right. And, And also to recognize, you know, it's so much easier and more practical to come up with your offer when you're already in the abundant state. You know, if you're in a state of innocent lack where you're just like, man, I need money. I'm not sure how to do this. I need clients. It'll feel tough to figure out how to make an offer and get people to do anything because you're not in the right state. But if you're just serving, you get to this point where you just feel so amazing. 
you feel so magical. You love helping people. It feels so good. And then from that brilliance, from that wholeness of the wealth of your spirit, you'll have the inspiration. You'll have the naturalness, the flow of what to say through your channel to continue the thing for people who genuinely want more. Because there are people who actually genuinely, they're like, wow, I love this live stream. I want to be with you one-on-one. -on -one. How can I mentor with you? How can I get a session? You know, so, but you're, you'll be saying it from a different state that just feels different as well when you're when you're delivering it. Does that make sense? Yeah. In the in-between state right now, like, ah oh, shit. This is the part. This is the initiation. <laughs> you know, when you're in the initiation, you're like, all right, let's go. <laughs> but yeah. Exactly. That makes it, sense. So yeah. Much. Have fun with it. Yeah, I'm gonna have fun with the drug dealing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, I think we'll do maybe about two more over here. Is that okay with you, Daniela? Let me just check in with the hostess. Sounds perfect. This okay. is amazing. Thank okay. you, Lion. Okay, cool, cool. Um, next up, we got A. <laughs> it just says A on your thing, so I'm not sure what your name is. Let's unmute you. Ava. Hi, yeah, my name's Ava. <laughs> What's up, Ava? Hi, thank you so much for this talk. It's it's really beautiful. My pleasure. Yeah, thank you for being here. Uh, so I actually joined one of your like free live events in 2020. Oh, cool. And I was like at the beginning of something like really intense. And I don't even remember what I asked you, but you said something that like really set me on a path. You said like um, embrace, it was something like embrace the dark. And like when something comes through you that isn't like love and light, just fucking go with it. <laughs> and it it gave me permission to like fully step into my gifts because I was able to like step into how much I love anger and how much I love rage and how much I love destruction and that this was divine too and so I spent three years like becoming a, a channel of rage and helping women who experience sexual violence tap into that like destruction and it like lit me up it like set me on fire it made me so happy and um but I, I also really care about being a clear channel and and like being right with that and I know that there are many other perspectives that are like forgiveness and and you know um like th that teach more of like a wholeness perspective mm -hmm. and I had a really uh it was a specific experience recently where I was actually talking to the Akashic Records about something that happened to me when I was a kid and I was really mad about it and I, I kind of rushed the opening prayer and um, they were like, like they, they gave me a perspective that was very like, like the person who did this was out of contract and out of line, like, um, and, and then I kind of like adjusted my channel and got more of a perspective of like everything happened for a purpose. And this was, you know, for the development of this. And I was gen I was really confused about um, how those voices like played with each other. And I don't know if this question is like out of the scope of this um, talk, but it just really came up as like a curiosity. Um, and, and I, I wanted to and know what's, what's what's so what's had. the question in there? I didn't I didn't catch what like what the question part was. I think it's like. Um, was was the more kind of angry voice like a distortion of this particular channel yes. and is there value in both perspectives or yeah there's yes so there's always value in any perspective and so for one just to for context and just for the sake of perhaps clearing up any mistranslation um what I imagine I, I probably suggested back then was to embrace whatever you're feeling, you know, whether it's whether it's something you're labeling as bad or good, they're all just feelings at the end of the day. 
And so it's important to embrace those feelings and to alchemize them in a way that's useful, not necessarily to uh, attack or bring them at people, but so that you could feel the fullness of them and they could transmute into higher vibrational feelings and emotions, so to speak. Just to, just to clear up uh, in case it was out of context. And in terms of what you're asking about is if you're hearing an angry voice, what was the question you said? If it's if it's valid or if it's helpful? What was the specific question there? Was it a distortion of the channel I was speaking uh, to? Yes. So when you're channeling pure source energy, it'll never be angry. It'll mm -hmm. never be heavy. It'll never be hard. It'll never be controlling. It'll never be contracting in any way. It will always be enlightening. It will always be liberating. It will always be, in a sense, fulfilling. Even if, you know, you might receive an intuition that your response to it is contracting. Like, for, for example, you might get the intuition, it's time to move on from a certain relationship. And you feel the lightness and truth of it. But then your body's like, e you know, that's different. But a pure receiving will never feel heavy or contracting or those things. And that's where it's so important as a channel to recognize that whatever your state is, whatever your emotional state is, your alignment also comes into your channel. You know, for example, mm -hmm. many people, or I would, at least in my experience, I know there are many people who go to lots of brilliant psychics. And I'm curious how many of you, how many of you have had this experience? There are lots of people who go lots of brilliant psychics. And when it comes to, let's say, um, how they've helped them with their growth and their business, it's just like mind blowing. This person's amazing. And then for some reason, whenever the psychic helps you with your love life, something just doesn't feel right. It's like you listen because you're so used to trusting them and you're vulnerable with them. And so you're like, okay, but it just, something just doesn't feel kosher, right? This is where it's important to listen to your own resonance. The reason I point to this is because even the most brilliant of psychics, if they're holding any type of resent towards love or anything of that sort, that's going to leak into their channel and into the information to give, which will be indicative of how dualistic it might be. Be like, oh, that, you know, that person's dark, stay away from them or whatever it might be. So, so yes, I'm, I'm saying this to say that certain things can leak into your channel if you're not I just want to say integrous enough, if you're not um, diligent enough, but it doesn't need to, you know, it, it's not, it's not a necessarily a common experience if your devotion is to the highest love, the highest light. Cause at the end of the day, what I'm trying to say here is there's no reason to also to fear it because you could feel it. You don't need to fear it because you could feel it. Right. If right now in this moment, all of you were just like, okay, I'm open. I'm practicing and learning channeling here. Show me what a dark energy feels like. And just notice what that sensation feels like. Like, oh, okay. It kind of feels like mm, whatever it feels like. Okay. Thank you. You could leave now. Show me what a really light and beautiful energy feels like. Oh, okay. And you'll feel that. Show me what love feels like. Show me what source information feels like. And whenever something doesn't feel like that, let me know. Remind me so that I know I'm always aligning to the highest source because that's my devotion. That's my priority. And that will give you a subconscious guideline because you're setting the parameters for yourself of what you choose and what you prefer. Is this helpful? Yeah, for sure. Cool. Does that answer your question? Yes. Thank you so much. Amazing. Cool. Thank you. Beautiful. So let's do, okay, we'll do two more for real this time. <laughs> uh, Josie. Thank you so much. Like, well, all of you, it's just so beautiful to be with all of you. And there's a question that I'm just like facing the last couple of weeks. Like, do you have any advice how to stay in my highest purity? Like, I have the feeling that I so often 
get into my own way and that bothers me quite a bit so I yeah especially well Daniela as well like you are so pure guys and I just wonder how do you do that especially having this lightful playful energy how do you do that <laughs> I mean well it's my nature just like yours for one even if maybe I have, a, I'm more remembered in it or more, I have the volume turned up there, but it's my nature, just like yours. And, you know, my question to you would be, you know, where are you not letting yourself? Well, wherever I judge myself, like I, yeah, I so fast start judging myself for not feeling right, not being in the flow. Like as soon as I don't feel how I, want to feel then I judge myself and then it's like a downwards fire like cool, cool. then could I block myself cool could, could you have fun with that if you wanted to could you choose to like you know something goes quote-unquote wrong or something happened you're like oh okay hold on let's let's try it this way then let's try this let's play like that can you have more fun with it well yes if I choose to yes <laughs> right and i'm offering you the frequencies so that you could catch up on to it as well that's why you're going tick, 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 right I'm, I'm emanating it for you here so but you just said the key words if i choose to yes and that's really all it is 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 choosing to and being like okay well maybe I try this let's try that because the more you play with it it's like swinging a baseball bat you might miss a couple balls but you're still learning to play baseball you're learning to, what to do when you hit it and you're learning what to do when you miss it when you miss it, it's not helpful to get angry and frustrated and slam your bat. That's not going to progress the game. It's more useful to go, okay, all right, well, let's try this this time. All right, let's stand like this. Let's try like that, right? And then when you do hit it, you can run with it and have fun. So treat it like a game. This is actually how I remember it started for me when I was specifically channeling a being named Thoth. In the beginning, you guys know that arcade game, uh, DDR, Dance Dance Revolution, where the, the arrows come down and you have to like step on the arrows at the same. So that's kind of what channeling felt like for me in the beginning, where when I was channeling Thoth, because I was so new to it, I was afraid to let the voice speak, you know, to unkink the hose as it was coming through, because I didn't know what was going to be said and I didn't want to look stupid and I didn't want to mess anything up. And so because of my fear, in the beginning, it's like I kept, I was missing the dance, dance revolution steps. It's like it would come through and then I, then I'd be, uh, uh. so my message was coming through choppy and my body started to overheat. And so then I just took a break. I was like, okay, I see what the game is now. Let me take a break. I was with my students. I'm like, let's go eat, take a snack. And then when I came back, I'm like, all right, game on, let's do it again. And then I approached it again more playfully and I was hitting all those dance steps and it was just like, whoa. So it's all in how you approach it and choose to play playfully with it. Yeah, like I, I feel there a fear coming up that I kind of have the feeling as soon as I just start like surrendering to the playfulness that I, I'm kind of scared to miss the point, even though I can't tell you what the point is. And I, so that, that's something you get to play with too, yes? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much yeah you you have an opportunity not a problem <laughs> all right you have an opportunity to play so just just play with it cool <laughs> can i add something to that uh sure Who, who's speaking <laughs> Hold sorry, on. sorry david it's benny uh, uh sure yeah um, with the playfulness of life, a bigger tool that I've found is simple sarcasm, you know. Obviously, don't be rude, but, you know, when you trip down the stairs, that was fun. <laughs> you know, simple things like that. Just sure. rewire the brain to see things a bit lighter. Exactly. Whatever happens to work for you, whatever, whatever feels good on your system, exactly. Move in the direction of a lighter feeling. Thanks, Benny. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Last one, we are going to go to Brianna. Hello. What's poppin', Brie? <laughs> How are you? Magical yourself. I'm doing really great. Okay. What, what did you so, want to explore over here? <laughs> um, 
I have like a deep rooted conditioning of like fear based things and like Christianity practice for my family Mm -hmm. specifically. Um, So once I've like transitioned out of that and I've been trying to like, hold on, I have a gardener outside. So let me look. Um, It's okay. We don't hear anything. Oh, okay, cool. So I, whenever I feel like I'm trying to connect and like, I feel like energy and I feel like a a connection starting to brew the, like a resistance of fear, I feel like comes up in me and like restricts me from that connection. Mm. Um, Just for like a specific examples, I wake up a lot of like two, three in the morning. And so like, I kind of, when I was like looking for reasons why I did that, they were saying like, um, you know, it's like a special time when you wake, when you're woken up. And so like the best thing to do is try to connect and see what's there for you. But whenever I would try to do that, I would like, I would feel it there, but I couldn't like the, I feel like the deep conditioning of fear was like resisting for everything to come through for me. Mm-hmm. And so I just don't know how to like, I felt like I've been stuck in that, in mm. that, and I don't know how to like mm. work with it, if mm. that makes sense. Yep. I understand you. Always witness the dark with a peaceful heart. Always witness the dark with a peaceful heart. One time I was struck by a vision as I was opening my own channel and my gifts and was like really in the momentum of it, there was a period of time where I started to perceive things that I didn't want to perceive. And that frightened me because I didn't know what it was. And I was, so I was labeling it as things. Didn't mean I was right about it, but I was labeling it as things. And so I was frightened. And so I decided to ask for help, ask for guidance. And I specifically asked ISIS at the time. And I was brought into a meditation. And what I saw in my meditation was myself flying as this beautiful blue bird with a golden force field around it, almost like a sun. And I'm flying and I'm flying and I'm having fun. And then at some point I landed in a tree and I sat myself upon a branch. And as I sat myself in that tree, I saw in the tree right next to me, there was a bunch of dark crows representing darkness. And immediately I was like, I got a little scared. And then one by one, the crows, the dark crows started to fly right into my force field, right into my light and slam into it and fall and slam into it and fall. And at first it startled me, but then I realized, wait a second, all they're trying to do is get to the light, not realizing that they have the light within them as well. They're just misguided. And so in that moment, when I realized that it turned up my compassion for what was happening. I'm like, oh, I get it. And when I turned up my compassion, the beams of my light, of my force field, each ray started to hit the heart of each crow. And then they looked inside and they became illuminated and self-realized and turned into magical birds. This is where I say, always witness the dark with a peaceful heart because they're not actually dark. At the end of the day, it's just a lesson or an opportunity looking to an unfold because from a higher perspective, from a perspective of unity consciousness, it's all source, right? It's, it's all God. In three words, all that is. So in other words, that which you perceive as an angel and that which you perceive as a devil is just source in a Halloween costume playing different roles. It's being the infinite. That's why... You know, if you have a frightening experience, it could very well be an angel and it is source just there to play something out for you. So you don't have to be afraid. So perhaps in this scenario, you could choose to learn to turn up your own compassion and be like, okay, wait, there's nothing actually scary scary here because it's all source. It's all God. Let me turn up my own compassion. And then you're going to see the truth get revealed for you and recognize that that was the lesson looking to play out all along. And that was just the best way to do it. For you to see that that oneness is already there. Is this making some sense to you? Mm-hmm. Is this resonating? Yeah. Beautiful. Is this helpful? Yes, thank you. My absolute passion and pleasure. 
All right, Daniela, I think we Gucci. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. If you could have heard all my wows, I was like, oh, this is so good. Yes. <laughs> I love listening to you, Lion. I love your transmissions. I love the way that you lead and guide and teach. I love how effortless and natural, the word that comes to me when I think of you and your transmissions is they're like precise and mm. efficient and they open up ease. Mm. Did I feel that today? Like how simple <laughs> yet profound, like he really knows how to naturalize the magic, the embodiment, the, the channeling of, of divinity. Thank you. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. <laughs> yeah, this was amazing. If, if you guys were touched, if you want to share some love with Lion in the chat, <laughs> let us know how this was for you. Let me open up the chat over here. <laughs> It's incredible. Thank you so much, David. Uh, like yeah. just being you showing up and Danielle, thank you all. Incredible. Thank you. Thank you. That means a lot to me. I appreciate you. It's truly my pleasure. Oh, I'm seeing your messages here. Thank you. Feeling so inspired. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you. Feeling loving. Hi, sending my love from Toronto. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. I, I really trust that you guys enjoyed this, that it was helpful, that it left you with some really cool and fun practices. And again, just to give a little bit of a recap here, you know, because I know we covered a lot, is remember to prepare your soil. So remember, embodiment of truth and authenticity. The sooner you let go of who you think you need to be, the sooner you become more of who you truly are. That is the soil that is great for blossoming your channel, the flower of your channel. From there, you water it with your passions, your excitements, your inspirations. That's going to ignite your gifts and also ignite the synchronicities that will lead you to learning more and finding more of what you're looking for, such as your spirit guides, abundance, flow, so on and so forth. Have, having the pure intention and being playful with it so that you can access things very easily and being willing to practice this by showing up with friends, with family, with live streams and just say, hey, I'm trying something new. I'd love to play. If you'd like to be there, it'd be awesome. I'm looking for people who are just devoted to their growth, looking for clarity and who are down to ask some questions so I could play with channeling. That'll give you the playground to build your confidence right now, right away. So that as you play with these things and you continue to go through this becoming a channel experience, you could really follow along with confidence, with momentum. So you could really see where we're going with all of this. This is going to take you to new heights. You're going to have lots of fun with it. You're going to experience more of the magic that you are. And, um, and yeah, and just, and just have a lot of fun. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you for listening and lending me your ears. And uh, yeah, I love you. <laughs> we love you, Lion. Thank you. This was such an epic opening to becoming mm. a really, yeah, really incredible. So grateful to all of you who have been present here with us today. I really appreciate you. I so value you investing your time, your presence, your energy to be here with us to learn about this practice that I'm so passionate about from people who, who I love, who I receive so much from. I, I would love to share. Well, something that I'm really excited about related to Lion is I've been hosting this training called Akashic Metamorphosis for years now. It is my biggest gift to humanity. It is like, it's, it's my dharma, it's my purpose. And it trains people on how to channel psychic development, develop their spiritual gifts. It also teaches God-led business development. And for the first time ever, I have, I'm gonna have a co-facilitator and I'm sure you can guess who that's gonna be. I've invited Lion to co-facilitate with me because I so love the way that he teaches all of this. I so respect and appreciate his brilliance. I feel like he takes these teachings and he amplifies them and he expands them and he makes them so simple and so easy. So I am really excited to receive the contribution of 
like Lion's vision and brilliance and the uniqueness of his gifts in this next round of Akashic Metamorphosis, which starts on March 29th. It's a nine month long online training, starts with an eight week intensive, followed by monthly meetings and calls after that. Just wanted to put it out there that you are all invited. Would love to share with you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Lion also has this incredible, it's a, it's a pre-recorded course called Opening to Channel that I got to guest speak on and it was amazing. The vibes were exquisite. So if you want to learn more from Lion in that way, that is available to you too. Do you want to share on that, Lion? Yeah, sure. Um, so... Opening the channel is something that got created through me in 2020. That was just very, very exciting. Uh, Daniela Gill was a guest along with a few others. And it's essentially what it sounds like. You know, it's a lot of the flavors that we brought here today, only just more intensive and immersed, where it was designed as a seven day journey, which of course you could do over seven weeks if you wanted to. But it shows you not only how to open up your channel, but how to really embrace and step into the fullest expression of your gifts, of your shine and your purpose. And where I go really deep into the practical methods of how to use your gifts, like how do you read energy very accurately and precisely? How do you go not only talk to your spirit guides, but go meet them and train with them? And I use hypnosis. I'm also a hypnotist. I use hypnosis to enhance these experiences. So you really learn in a very deep and profound way so that by the end of it, you know, if you're wanting to be able to show up as a more confident channeler, whether it's for your clients, whether it's for yourself, whether it's just to be more of the fullness of who you are, that will be the result for you. And you also have a lifetime of support within the light leader community because I care about your success. You know, so this is designed as a seven day journey that you could do at whatever your pace is. And uh, yeah, you could find that on my website and I'm sure Daniela will be sending it out in the emails as well. Yeah, you will all get an email with all of that information, all the ways in which you can connect with Lion. He also has a community portal called Guided Growth. Do you wanna do you wanna share about that? I was on one of the calls recently and it was really, really lovely. Thank you. Yeah. So alternatively, guided growth is really my service to humanity. You know, I was asking myself, how could I reach the most people? And what if you never had to feel as stuck again? Because I know it sucks when you feel stuck or blocked with certain things. And a lot of the questions that even came up here today are the kinds of things we explore in guided growth. And so over the last 11 years, I've made so much channeled content for my clients and from questions that you guys have asked and just my own self-realization that I've put it into a library of there's literally about 350 channeled videos on uh, developing your spiritual gifts, permanently healing emotional traumas, mastering your unique flow, wealth and creativity. So there's a library of that in the, that I've created for guided growth, as well as you get these monthly live streams with myself and special guests like Daniela and other people where we just serve you in your growth. So anywhere where you're feeling stuck, anywhere where you're feeling you have any questions, if there isn't already a video for it, you'll still get served and supported for it so that you never have to feel stuck again and you can rise with soul family and just have fun with us. You also get access to exclusive events and opportunities. And the first month is completely free, you know, because I want you to just see for yourself that it helps you. And then if you want to stay from there, you absolutely can. And from there, it's $33 a month. I wanted to make it really accessible. Amazing. What an incredible opportunity. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah thank, thank you for asking me to share. 